Welcome back to the chaos. I wouldn't class it as a blowy day in Bangor. It's not quite that bad. We don't fall out of our bunks with the boat rocking from side to side, but certainly a fresh day in Bangor. Um, he liked to have conversations standing behind big boats out of the wind, that sort of day. Today is foam day. Hey, if you watched last week's episode, you can see that we went into deep shock when we found out the price of um, cushion foam. If you want to redo foam and things, Talk to your bank manager first. We have since looked into several other possibilities, such as going to Ikea, getting mattresses and mattress toppers, cutting them up and things like that. And by the time we do all that, we're going to save about maybe £100. But we've got to do all the cutting and fitting ourselves, whereas for an extra £100 we're going to have foam to exactly the right size and shape, cut and fitted for us. So the saving, £100, yeah, it's not insignificant, but at the same time with the shortness amount of time that we have in our lives at the minute paying somebody else to do it is actually worth our while because we are so time poor at the minute um, thank you to everybody who made suggestions we appreciate it greatly and if we had a different shape of bunk we would certainly look more at the mattress situations so like the cutting up things but for these shapes of bunks with the width of them because these are basically giant singles um, it ain't gonna work out brilliantly for us I wish it would I really do so what we've done is we have taken these up to my mum's, bless her, and we have dyed them using Dylon Jeans Blue. And as you can see, they've come out pretty well. We're, we're quite impressed with these. Because of the weather, we've had to dry them in the boat. So what we did was we hung them up, we got the dehumidifier, and we turned it on, and it took out a couple of litres of water out of these. And then we turned on the Ebers packer during the night and heated the whole boat up, opened all the vents and hatches, and they're all bone dry this morning. The downside for us is, these are the bottom ones. These are the ones that are going to the foam fitters today to be fitted with foam. And we still have the backs of the chairs to do. And they're in a bag over there, waiting to go up on the washing line, which I will reinstall when I take the camera down, otherwise you wouldn't see me at all. <laughs> So I'm going to get on with some domestic work, then I'm going to put the, um, the washing line back up. Uh, my job, Gainers off the boat at the minute, my job is to take these and set them on top of the relevant cushions uh, and roll up Gainers side so that it's ready to go in the car when she comes back and then they can go off to the foam fitters with their foam which they're going to use for templates and it can all be done and dusted and hopefully tonight we will have nice comfortable bunks to sit on. Um, other projects, we've decided it's time to varnish the bulkhead while we got all this, while we got all the bunks taken apart and things like that. So when we get all this done and back, we're going to start on the starboard side of the boat, do that, move everything, do the port side of the boat, move everything back. It's going to take about a week to do that. It's just a long job. What can we do? Anyway, my job now is to get this washing out of the way, then to put the drying line back up, take these off, put the wet ones back on, and then leave it all together. Looks like utter chaos. Yeah, but they've arrived and, um, you know, we're going to put these down and um, then all I've got to do is sort out the backs and uh, the job will be done. <sighs> we'll get there. That's the main thing. We'll get there. Your side has got to go in first. First, yeah, it I, goes know. I know. I know, because it underneath it. Well, that's why there's a big gap in mine, because you've, you've taken the other thing out. Yeah, that's right, because I said it's easier to put it in without that. 
So, well, there's, the, there's the first minor problem. What's that? Well, it's so bloody stiff, look, it's sitting way up. There's That's a huge what? gap under it. It's on a slant, you dafty. Oh, right, okay. Look, I can put my hand underneath it. Yeah, well, I'm sure it'll flatten eventually. <laughs> <laughs> right, get the insert. Right, okay. Not so sure, sure if I've got the right one, because I thought I'd got... Oh, uh, maybe you haven't. Okay. Well, how did that work out? That's just it, isn't it? It's like... How do we wind up with two left-handed inserts? Yeah. We must have the foam in the wrong ones. Yeah. We're going to have to swap the foam out of them. No, it must be this way round. I've got it right way round. Was that side over there in a slant? No, that's it. That's it. And then that one's this side. Or it could be, because that feels floppy, that I put the foam in the wrong covers. <sighs> I have no idea, but... Uh, we'll find out. I'll find out, OK? Because I know which ones go where. Well, then I damn well do, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's... that's that's for your side, surely. Yeah, that's my side. Well, then I've got them the wrong way round. Let me just find it. Oh, yay! Chair foam is now off the list. So what's the result like? I mean, not, not your board, the foam. Oh. <laughs> Boy, it is a hell of a lot harder than what we've been used to. So when he said, don't go for the extra firm, yeah, you're right. Don't go for the extra firm. I mean, so, you know, this is this is pretty solid. I can tell you that for free. So that just leaves us the backs of the chairs to sort out now. <laughs> yeah, but I've, I'll do that another day and it'll get done by next week. So that'll be another day. But yeah, that's it done. Happy days. This is what we've been given, and the container has got loads of vegetables which she adores. Um, the portion sizes are quite generous, and we're very happy. And um, we're just having a great time, aren't we? Yeah, so we're at Carlingford Marina, and we're at the Curry House, just inside Carlingford Marina. And um, I've only had about two mouthfuls, and I've got sweat running down the side of my nose already. Great news. Victory dinner. Yep, victory all right. <laughs> that was a really tricky entrance. You did fantastic there, as always. And also did you? Well, I have a tendency to do with the big open sea bed. That <laughs> doesn't happen to do anything up there. No, I can see several white caps, Bev. I can see the splash.
day in, you know it's a good day not to be out. And you can see all the fishing boats behind it. Yeah. And just off to the side, you can see a little bit of white caps. We'll see a bit more of that in a minute. But just look at that tiny little um, tower. tower. Tiniest tower I've seen, to be honest. Now it's kind of got his leg arm um, stuck, but it's just having. Uh, uh, it'll be all right, and I'll see if I if, it, if I need to move it. I will do. Up. More mites. As you can see from the lifelines, it is very crawling. <sighs> this seems to be sitting on top of some rocks. We thought it was uh, the mark we were aiming for, but it wasn't. It was something totally different. Um, we have no idea what it is. I know it's been a long time since I've been back to uh, Belfast and Northern Ireland and things, but I thought it was lovely of them to put a fireworks display on to welcome me back. <laughs> it's not often you get that sort of thing. What, the prodigal... Uh, prodigal daughter returns. Prodigal daughter returns. They just missed me, let's be honest. Celebrate! It's just been 20 odd years. <laughs> My fans love me. <laughs> so the only question I have is, you welcome me back so much, why is it pissing down rain? <laughs> oh, it's not that bad, Dad. <laughs> 